I have created some odd shaped doorways in the upstairs of our house by trying to take advantage of high pitched roofs to create additional storage space. The problem is there are no pre-built doors that match the size of the spaces that I need. In this case these doors will be paint grayed and need quite a few of them so I've come up with an inexpensive way to make them. These will also be installed as barn doors so I have quite a bit going on in this project. I need to do a little reconfiguring of this space to make this work out right. So I'm going to frame in about a one foot section of wall on the left side of the entrance to this closet area. The plan is to then build two 20 inch wide barn doors that will split the area in the middle and allow access to the closet space. Because the doors are only going to be about 70 inches tall, I want the interior panel sections of the doors to look proportional to the overall size. I'm sort of framing this a little bit backwards, but I'm using an existing door jam for 60 inch bifold doors, so it was simpler to do it this way. I find it's easy doing small framing projects like this to use pocket hole bits, pre-drill holes for attaching the framing together. I then use two and a half inch assembly screws to complete the joints. In a video I did on building and installing floating shelves called Strong Floating Shelves, I showed how I went about constructing shelves that slip over brackets that are mounted to the wall. I had a very nice comment from a viewer named Nancy. You know, sometimes you see somebody doing something and it gives you an idea as to how you might be able to build on what they have done to come up with the solution to a problem you've been trying to solve. That's what happened in this case. Nancy took the idea of the floating shelf construction and applied it to something else she wanted to do. She said that based on my floating shelf design, she was able to see that with a few modifications, she could make her own hollow core doors of any thickness and size that she wanted. Nancy got me into thinking about it and I realized she was absolutely right. So I made my own modifications and came up with a methodology for building hollow core doors with 2 by 4 strips and masonite. Throw in a little cove molding and you end up with a pretty good looking door made to whatever size you need. I'm going to follow this video with a more detailed video that is linked in the corner that goes into the specifics of how I build these types of doors. So I'm going to hit just the highlights of the door construction in this video and focus more on the installation of these doors as barn doors. I'm building these doors to kind of match the other interior doors in the house. They won't be exact, but I'm wanting to create a similar interior panel look, but that is proportional to the size of the doors I'm actually building. I begin by making an exterior frame to define the dimensions I need for the overall door. I'm securing the corners with dominoes in this case, but it could be done with dowels or biscuits. Assembling the rest of the frame is uh, an easy process now. The simplest way to go about that at this point to me is a pocket hole set up. Uh, there are all kinds of jigs nowadays that are inexpensive uh, that will allow you to do that, to join pieces like this together. In my case, I have a piece of equipment I bought many years ago. It's called a face maker. It's a face frame tool. It allows you to take pieces of material you're joining together and uh, literally clamp them in place when you make your pocket holes and then that way it gives you a good flush joint without really anything else except uh, doing the assembly. So this process continues by filling in all the pieces that correspond to your design for the door. When you're done you end up with something like this. I mentioned that this is an inexpensive way to build custom doors and it really is. All these pieces that make up the core are cut from a single 2x4. The exterior surfaces of the door are made from a 3 16 inch piece of masonite. The most expensive parts for these doors are the cove trim pieces. They can be made for less money using scrap, but these pieces I'm using cost about $7 each and two 8 foot pieces are necessary for my design. As I mentioned earlier, my next video will go into detail on how I build these doors. But if you're wondering how I secure the masonite to the frame, I use contact cement. It just has so many advantages for doing projects like this. As much as I hate dealing with the fumes, I've never been unhappy with the end result of using contact cement. And by the way, to deal with the fumes, I always wear a respirator rated to handle fumes like this, or use a fresh air mask. At this point in my life, I can pretty much catch one strong whiff of contact cement fumes and I start to get woozy. So it is definitely a product to be very careful with and make sure there are no open flames or pilot lights anywhere in the area when you're using contact cement.
So this gives you a sense of where I'm heading with this concept. You have this frame that can be constructed in any configuration or thickness that you want. In my case, my overall thickness of the door is actually an inch and a quarter, which is anything but a standard thickness. Then you cover the frame with any kind of material you want. In this case, I use masonite and cove trim to give it a kind of raised panel look. One of the real interesting things about this hardware, which is uh, hardware that I bought off of Amazon, looks like good stuff, and I'm sure it is good stuff. It's uh, but the, it's, it's different from uh, other types of hardware that I've used in that it uh, it, it doesn't require a header board that uh, you screw to the uh, to the wall and then screw your uh, your hardware into. In this case, they're calling for a bar to screw into the sheetrock and into studs which is a great idea. It's set up for 16 inch on center all the way across for their hardware. The only problem is you rarely find framing uh, that's going to be 16 inch on center all the way through an eight foot span, particularly something that's going over a door like this. So it's kind of silly to, to create the hardware this way. But anyway, that's what they've done and I'll work with it. So I'm gonna bring in a header on this and install my hardware to it. The only issue with it is I'm, I'm using a half inch piece of material which is gonna push the door out a half inch as well. And so I may have to cut off my bushings here a half inch to get it back to the thickness that we may want, but we'll see how all that works out. So in the end, I had three studs that I was able to screw the header board to. Above the door jamb where the header board is located, there's nothing structural behind the sheetrock. So there, in three spots, I used a version of toggle bolts called togglers that in combination with the screws into the studs gave me a solid header to attach the barn door hardware to. By virtue of the fact that I'm using two barn doors to cover this 40 inch opening, that makes for a long rail. I had a comment from a fellow on another barn door video I did in which he just made a proclamation to everybody to not install barn doors. He had them throughout a home that he had lived in and hated them. I wonder if you ever lived in a home that had pocket doors everywhere. Anyway, you either like the look of this type of installation or you don't. But one thing you have to be okay with is having a long enough rail installed on the wall to handle the path that the door or doors needs to travel to close and open the space. So you're going to have a lot of hardware showing on the wall. With everything installed, it's time to put the finishing touches on the trim and the new section of wall. I'm using 5 8 by 2 and a quarter inch pieces of trim that I milled from a 2 by 6 stud. I put a quarter inch rounded over edge on the trim. I had to do quite a bit of adjustment to get these doors to align, but after loosening and repositioning the brackets, I ended up getting a pretty good fit. One nice surprise was that I did not have to cut the bushings down because I added the half inch header board. The doors hung close enough to the trim to work out just fine. My last step is to add the brackets that keep the doors from rolling off the end of the rails. That then leads me to the ritual I seem to always do of opening and closing the doors some insane number of times. You can just assume it's a lot more than necessary. One of these days I'm going to have to count the number of times I do this sort of thing before I'm convinced everything is working fine. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. Going from this old setup for five foot bifold doors to this barn door look is a pretty positive change. I hope you'll check back regularly and see what you may have missed because there's always something going on around Dobbs Workshop. Thanks for watching.